Hi, my name is Vexter and uh, this is the second part of my orangutan tutorial. If you haven't seen the previous one, just pause this one, go to the other one and then come back. Uh, today we're going to add some fur and I'm going to show you two different ways how to do that. And now I'm going to show you how to apply fur. Um, you can sculpt fur, you can add fur. It really depends, are you 3D printing your model or you're going to just do some kind of digital art. So I'm going to first show you what I would do if I'm not sculpting everything for 3D printing. So I'm going to just mask this area and then I'm going to hit lightbox and I'm going to go into fibers and I'm going to pick this short baby, double click. And you can see that it's applied to, to the model and, and it, it kind of looks cute, but we're going to fix that. Uh, we're going to adjust that by going into fiber mesh tab. And there are a lot of options and we're not going to go through them. I'm just going to show you quickly few how you can add length, uh, more, more hair just differently. It, it's really a lot of experimentation. And when I apply this, when I click on accept, we're going to have even more fun with it. But I'm going to quickly reduce the amount of fibers for the sake of this tutorial. And yeah, this, <laughs> this looks kind of okay. So I'm just going to accept it. And you can see now that I have another sub tool and it's only with, with that, with those fibers. And now we can actually tweak them even more. So if you pick any of these brushes here, you can, you can do something with it. So we're going to groom short hair. You can see you can make changes on top of it. So just imagine you can you can add a lot of fibers on top of the he he uh, head, and then you can basically comb the hair in a way however you want. So that's one of the neat features of ZBrush. But like I said, if if you're going with 3D printing, then you actually need to sculpt your fur on top, and I'm gonna use one technique where. Basically, I'm going to just duplicate the head and I'm going to shrink down the head a little bit. So I'm going to click on the move tool, sorry, on the scale tool and just make everything slightly smaller. So uh, the smaller model goes inside and I'm going to probably have to adjust some areas with the move tool. Um, but it's really hard to see the difference. So I pressed shift F, which goes, uh, which turns the wireframe for only the sub tool that it's selected. And now I can easily see what is coming out of the, the model. And um, there's also another option that we can use. So let me quickly adjust this. Okay. So we can go into the formation and let, let me hide everything. Uh, you can go to inflate, but go into negative and it's going to make the model sh shrink itself a little bit. So now I'm, I'm almost certain that there will be no leaking into another model. So now I still have the inside model selected the one that is basically hidden and I'm gonna use clay build up to just start adding more clay to that that one and you can see that how I'm using that to basically make uh, just rough shapes where the fur is gonna be and trust me this this is a really great uh, thing because you're not affecting your uh, original sculpt in any way and if you decide to to change some stuff you can always just duplicate another head 
again make it smaller and apply details uh, for example I will I'm doing um, King Kong diorama right now and I have changed for I think four or five times already and if I just apply that to to my uh, original mesh I would have problem like I would have to search for some older save games and in the meantime I've, I've changed so many other stuff that you know that would be impossible I would have to go and start working from scratch which really wouldn't be a great idea so now I have applied just basic shapes like you you can see that I wasn't going for any kind of details it's just rough thing that we're gonna smooth out and get some nice curves now it's time to smooth everything out properly so I'm holding shift and smoothing out stuff um, I could use sculptures to do that much easier but this is gonna be fine because I'm I'm just gonna apply a lot of different details on top of that. I could have gone into zero measure and lower the amount of, of polygons there just to to have better control, but again this is gonna be a quick tutorial and I just wanna show you quickly what you can do. So I'm gonna quickly change the color of subtool uh, to apply that you need to go into color and click on fill object you, one thing that is confusing everyone is it looks like everything is changed and painted in that color but if you go into the slider and move it all the way up you will see that only the subtool that was selected has the, the actual color applied so now I'm gonna use uh, one of the tools that people don't like that much it's uh, I think it's pronounced rake uh, and basically I use it in, in a specific way because if you just use the default version and I'm gonna quickly show you how that works um, it's gonna it's not gonna look great like you, you will see a lot of steps and weird cuts and it just looks awful uh, but if you lower the intensity uh, then it's gonna look much much better it's gonna it's not gonna look that ugly and keep in mind that again I'm gonna smooth stuff and I'm just applying these for variation for different uh, texture look and um, also I like to use it because towards the edges you can you can really do different um, different variation that it's gonna look nice also you can get online a bunch of different brushes for the, the the hair for the fur which work also great and you can apply them in the same way as we apply textures on, on top of uh, this orangutan's face. Another tool that I like to use is also Damp Standard. It also makes the huge difference and with a different combination of intensity and size you can you can make a bunch of nice variations. There are few mistakes that you can see here, but they will they will soon be gone. But because I'm now smoothing out everything, and you can see there are just tiny parts that have actually stayed. And later I'm gonna use this rake tool more aggressive. I'm gonna use bigger strokes like that, and um, I'm following all the lines that I've made with with clay buildup because you constantly need to to go with the same stroke because I if I start doing something that's going the other way around it, it's it's gonna look weird it's gonna 
uh, bend in different ways and some of these mistakes we're gonna quickly fix by smoothing out stuff. I don't know why actually that happens, but if you go on top of that again, you can quickly fix it. We're gonna smooth everything a little bit more. Okay. And we're gonna go even more aggressive on this area. And here you can see that variation I was talking about. I'm, I'm holding Alt and releasing while I'm doing strokes and you can see the, the power of this brush actually. And again, and I don't know how many times I repeated that, you just do everything until you're actually satisfied. There's bunch of trials and errors in that. Uh, you can see that I'm I'm having a lot of gaps there that we're gonna fix in the in the next part when I start coming back to to some areas and you can even like add parts wherever you want but eh, <laughs> we're not gonna keep that. So again, I'm smoothing out and I'm actually adding clay on some areas. Again, with much more aggressive strokes. Sometimes, and this is just an idea, uh, sometimes I'm even adding separate subtools only for, uh, you know, just some chunks of hair that I want to control easily later. And I'm gonna adjust the, the beard or whatever that thing should be called because it needs to be a little bit bigger. And you can see that I'm not using symmetry at all anymore at this point. Again, it's, it's great for the variation. Done. Okay, uh, actually, I'm gonna remove these. I don't know why I did those. Yep. And that's how I do uh, these kind of models in ZBrush. I really hope you have liked this tutorial and that I was able to teach you something new. Uh, like I said, whatever you do, just keep working on it until you're satisfied. Uh, sometimes it's great to uh, take a break, which I'm gonna do right now. Uh, go out for an hour, come back and you will see all the mistakes on, on your model and what you can fix. And uh, that's gonna make your model even better. Anyway, thank you for watching this and I wish you all a really great day. Bye.